Okay, I'm pretty sure almost everyone has heard about the app called Remove China Apps. Before being taken down from the Play Store, it was number one trending with five plus million downloads. Come on. Google Play Store policies doesn't allow an app to promote the uninstallation of other apps. That was the prime reason of it being taken down. Anyways, we had it installed on a bunch of device and it detects Chinese apps installed on your phone and asks them to uninstall it. We tried it on a Samsung Note 9 and the results look clean. Although for some reason it doesn't detect Xiaomi Home. On other Chinese OEM phones like MI or Realme devices, it wasn't able to detect the native apps on the phone. So yeah, it needs a bit more work. Now, we have been doing videos on privacy and open source apps for quite some time and this app really caught our eye. However, the app lacks a lot of things. It doesn't detect apps that have investors from China or advertising companies funding privacy focused app. A big example is an infamous Chinese software company, Cheetah Mobile. The app consistently buys popular Android apps and converts them into ad hoc or just a spyware to send data to Chinese servers. Apps from Cheetah Mobile have been often removed from the Play Store. You might have heard of QuickPick, Antutu, ES File Manager, lots of apps and games under Cheetah Mobile and currently they are being published under single developer name. So now is the best time to talk about privacy and with that in mind, here's a list of popular apps that you should replace right now. Now, I don't want to get into the whole TikTok versus YouTube debate. However, the privacy issues on TikTok are definitely concerning, but the worst form is the creator's moderation policy. None. Have a look at this internal documents obtained by The Intercept. The makers of TikTok, the Chinese video sharing app with hundreds of millions of users around the world, instructed its moderators to suppress posts created by users deemed too ugly, poor or disabled for the platform. I have no words, I'll leave the detailed article in the description, but talking about TikTok alternative, well, there aren't much, but here is something similar, IGTV. Quick news, Facebook is about to release monetization on IGTV as well as Instagram lives. Now, IGTV isn't like TikTok, but has better content where you can follow your favorite creators who put up mobile first content, your favorite portrait mode. You can consider it more of like YouTube, but more personalized content. Only thing it lacks from TikTok is short 15 to one minute video, but research shows that those short form videos aren't good for your attention span anyway. So I'll let that slide. FYI, Zigazoo is another trending app that advertises itself to be a TikTok for kids. So instead of feeding your kid TikTok, you might be better feeding them Zigazoo. It has similar interface like TikTok, but the content is made for kids from preschools to 12th grade. AppLock is a wildly popular Chinese app with a lot of privacy issues. It's still trending on the Play Store. Have a look. This is Exodus, which tells you about an Android app's tracker and permissions. And here's AppLock's permission listing. So the app needs GPS, network permissions, overall 36 plus different permissions, which is just too much for an app locking service. And here's a glimpse of the app's privacy policies and what all data they want to access. I mean, like what? Why do you need all that just to overlay a lock on third party apps? But hey, the app says it all. If you don't agree with any term in this privacy policies, please do not use the service. I would recommend using not an app lock instead. It asks for fewer permission and most importantly, it doesn't ask shady permissions like usage data access. Like why do you need it? Isn't drawing over other apps and accessibility service enough for an app lock? Norton is also owned by Symantec, which is a US based company. It provides the same app lock benefits as app lock. Now, before you start typing your comments, Zoom isn't exactly a Chinese app. It's made by ex Cisco employees and is also headquartered in the US. That said, Zoom was recently caught routing data to Chinese servers, which in my opinion is still fair. But here, listen to this. If you are in the US and you're video calling someone in let's say the UK, there's no business for the video call to be routed via China because moreover the app has been heavily criticized for saying it's end-to-end -end encrypted and the privacy concerns. Major institutions, including the Indian government, have banned the usage of the app. So Google Meet is the most intuitive and straightforward Zoom alternative. You click on a button and a meeting is ready. You can instantly hold a meeting with 100 people for free. 
The meeting moderation is pretty much on par with Zoom and even better at times. We did a detailed video on Zoom alternatives which you can check out later after this video. Share it is being embedded in a lot of phones still and the app has always been on the wrong side of publicity. From hard coding passwords in the software code to being banned by the armed forces, installing apps without permission, the app has seen it all. It's about time you stop using Share it. If you're on a Xiaomi, Realme or Oppo device, you can use the native file sending app similar to AirDrop, the Xiaomi Oppo Vivo Alliance, which works on Xiaomi, Realme, Oppo and Vivo phones. For everyone else, you can use SnapDrop. It's an open source airdrop alternative. Both parties need to open the Snapdrop website on your device. It works on Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Android TV, anything with a web browser. And drag and drop files to other devices you see there. It works on peer-to-peer -peer architecture and requires you to be on the same Wi-Fi network, but the setup is a lot easier than ShareIt or even Zender. Opera is a Norwegian company, but the name and the brand is owned by a bunch of Chinese companies under the name Golden Bricks Private Equity Fund. In fact, the CEO and chairman of Opera VPN is also the CEO of Beijing Kunlun Tech, which is a popular game distributor and app distributor in China. On top of that, privacy policies do suggest that Opera is collecting anonymous app usage and browsing data. Although the VPN service is free and unlimited, but you know, if it's free, you are the product. Talking about privacy, we also see Turbo VPN. Hence, a much better alternative than these VPNs would be Proton VPN. The app is free, open sourced, and unlimited. In the free version, you can only select three server locations US, Netherlands, and Japan. It doesn't collect locks, unlike the free VPN service. However, you get a limited speed, limited servers to choose from, and one device usage. I highly recommend it to everyone looking for a free VPN. Similarly, there's the popular UC browser, which is still trending in India. Come on, why? The app has been removed from the Play Store for various reasons. It's always sending shady notifications and shows you illicit ads and news within the app. In case you're not using it, well, good. But if you still have it, replace it with Brave Browser. Brave is the best option as of now, which provides you a tracker-free experience. It's the most privacy-friendly and safe browser out there. However, the only option it lacks is the sync feature. It can only sync bookmarks between multiple devices and not your history or open tabs. We have a dedicated app browser video here, which will provide you much better web browser options on Android. Cam scanner. From injecting Trojan in your phone to getting pulled down from the Play Store, it has a lot of issues. No doubt it was the most popular and best app for PDF scanning, but you have better alternatives now. I suggest you replace it right away. You have the all-in-one office app, which lets you quickly scan PDF. Additionally, you can scan pictures and convert them to text or table. It's absolutely free and the best all-in-one app as of now. Another alternative which you can try is Google Drive. It's already installed on your phone. Just open it, tap on add, and it will show you the scan option. Upload and you're good to go. Another popular app is ES File Explorer, which has been the go-to file explorer for a lot of Android phones until it got sold to Do Global. It's not only a dubious Chinese company, but also an advertising platform. ES File Manager has often been removed from the Play Store and we suggest not using it. You can use a safer option like Amaze File Explorer. It's open source, provides FTP, cloud services like Google Drive, Dropbox, and even Root File Explorer. It also lets you read SQLite files if you have a rooted device, and I mostly prefer it due to the simplicity and material design. So that was the list. In case you feel we missed out on apps like PUBG, well, we're not against any country. It's just about privacy and better laws in the country that has the server. Also let us know about more apps that all of us have to uninstall and their alternatives. Pratik from this side, signing off. See you soon.